Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, I'm a former AZA Zoo educator and a reptile mom and now naturalist. And this is Samoa, my BCI boa. And yesterday was her gotcha day. It was our one year anniversary of being together. I did get her October 19th, 2019. And so yeah, and to celebrate one year together, I wanted to do a video with her. And I couldn't really think of one. And I was like, you know what? I've been doing tons of pros and cons of owning certain species, and I haven't done one for her yet. So today we're gonna do pros and cons of owning, owning boa constrictors. So I don't know how this lighting looks for you guys, just bear with me. My ring light cord is missing. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know I just built a bunch of new enclosures, I'm doing tons of upgrades, so things are being moved around a lot. And during that process, part of the cord for my ring light was no longer with my ring light. So I cannot use my ring light. So I'm filming in front of a window and I'm hoping that because this camera is a really nice camera that it's not going to affect the quality of this video by not having my ring light on. So we're just gonna roll with it because it's been a long time since I filmed in the video and I really need to get back to it. So you guys are also in luck because Samoa did just shed. Also, I went to go get her and found a shed in there. Um, it was under her hide though, so it could have been a couple days now. But look how big she's getting. I'll see if I can find a picture from when I first got her and put it in so you guys can see the one year comparison. But she's getting so big. And I do think she's going to be a very big girl by the time she's done growing, so I'm very excited. Uh, I don't know her exact age because she was rehomed to me. But I think when I got her, she was about a year old, maybe just over a year. So by now, she's probably like two and a half years old. So she's a big girl. And she's actually being really, really good today. Probably because she was in her cool hide and she was sleeping. So normally she's a huge spaz. But we'll talk about that in one of my points. So I have 10 pros and 10 cons. I usually try to do 10 and 10 um, for each species I talk about. So, and some of the points will be re repeats, but they could be cons or pros depending on how you look at them. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the pros. So pro number one is that they are pretty docile and pretty gentle. She's actually being really good today. Normally she's a little bit more of a spaz, like I said, but overall, they're just a very gentle snake. You're not likely to get bit by them unless it hasn't been handled a lot and it's got some attitude issues. But generally, Boa constrictors, BCIs, BCCs, they are pretty docile and gentle. Pro number two, like I said, they are a big snake. So if you want to get into big snakes, I recommend a BCI, or not BCI, but boa constrictors in general. Samoa is a BCI, now she's starting to wake up. <laughs> so pro number two, like I said, they are big snakes. So if you want to get into keeping big snakes, a boa constrictor is the way to go. Um, I also made a video on why Dumeril's boas are the perfect big snake for someone that wants to get into keeping big snakes. But really if it came down to it, I would say a Dumeril's boa or a boa constrictor would be really good. Um, now she's a little bit more of a spaz, so having Kronk, my Dumeril's boa, as my first big boa was very helpful for me before getting her because she's a big snake. and. I, before Croc, I'd never handled a big snake before, so he's very slow moving and gentle, so it's easy to learn how to handle a big snake before getting this spaz. <laughs> but in general, especially with a big body, they're pretty easy, easy to handle. But yeah, so just the fact that they're a big snake makes them a lot of fun, makes them really cool. Um, there's a huge size range, they could be anywhere from 6 to 12 feet, depending on the snake and the species and the sex. So they're just, they're so cool and they're so pretty but we'll, we'll get into that pro number three is that they are fantastic eaters i've never heard of a picky boa constrictor ever um samoa she's not picky at all in fact she's very very food motivated we'll talk about that in the cons but um they are fantastic eaters so a lot of people stress out when their snakes go on feeding strikes big thing with ball pythons you're not likely to get that with a boa constrictor they're just in general pfft, in general. Excuse you. They're just in general very good eaters. Number four is that they're pretty hardy. They're a first snake for a lot of people 
and they're especially a first big snake for a lot of people. And so they're just a they're pretty hardy species. Um, you know, they can handle some mistakes in your keeping. I don't recommend going out and making mistakes and keep making them. If you make a mistake, learn from it, definitely. But they can handle a little bit of a learning curve. Um, so they're not a super fragile species. So they're great for people that are just starting to keep snakes or just starting to keep big snakes. Number five is that despite their big size, they actually have pretty easy care, which is why another reason that they're pretty good for people starting out and keeping big snakes or even snakes in general. I mean, if you really want to jump in and go big, then I mean, they've got pretty easy care. Number six, I kind of sort of started mentioning earlier, and that's that they're really pretty. They come in many different localities, many different morphs. I actually have no idea what Samoa is other than a BCI. She's not a true red tail boa, um, but because she was rehomed to me, I have no idea what she is. She was sold to the woman as a Guyana boa, but she looks nothing like a Guyana boa. So I have no idea what she is. All I know is that she's dark. That's what I wanted. I I wanted a boa constrictor, but it had to be the right one. Like I really, I love the dark boas, the IMG boas, the darker the better. And I feel like they really give off that kind of like iridescent hue. So when I saw Samoa, I knew she was the boa that I had been waiting for. She was the one. Um, so she's very dark, I so I love, oh my gosh, can we not go up my shirt? So I love how dark she is. I'll try to get her from the camera so you guys can get kind of a, Good idea so it focuses on her okay so there you guys can see she's absolutely gorgeous she's super dark so I love it but also she's got see if you can see it she's got cookies on her back so those spots on her back look like chocolate chip cookies which is why her name is Samoa her name was gonna be Yzma to go with Kronk I kind of wanted any of my big snakes to have that Emperor's New Groove theme I couldn't see past the cookies on her back so I ended up going with Samoa and I think it fits her really well but she also she does have an iridescent hue um, I don't know if you guys can see it right now I don't really see it but if I take her outside in the Sun she's very iridescent so I'll try to put a video in right now so you guys can see that Pro number seven is that they are extremely easy to find. And if you're someone like me who would prefer to get animals in a rehoming situation or adoption, you, there's no shortage. Nine times out of 10, or let's say 50, 50, okay? You go on Craigslist, the snakes you find, I find 50% of the time they're ball pythons and the other 50% of the time they're boa constrictors. So they're very easy to find for rehoming if you didn't want to go to a breeder or to a pet store, or you know, if you were just, I don't know just looking in general didn't want to pay for them directly from a breeder because it's gonna be a little more expensive or you just wanted to do a good deed and get one that was being rehomed they're super easy to find there's no shortage of boa constrictors you can go on Craigslist and find a whole bunch Facebook marketplace people are always rehoming these guys which is kind of sad because they are amazing snakes they're great snakes but makes it easy for you to find one so Samoa like I said was a rehoming situation. Um, I got her for a pretty good price considering how pretty she is and I just absolutely love her. So pro number nine is that they live a very very long time so you're gonna have a snake for life and I mean not quite life they don't have the lifespan of like a bird but you're looking probably 20 to 30 years. You know most snakes average in their teens to 20s. Boas? They they're known to last quite a long time. So we're talking 20 to 30 years. You're going to have this snake with you. So that's great, especially if you're like me and you get really attached to things. I like my animals to live a long time because I can't handle when they die on me. <laughs> so the longer they live and the longer I have them, the better. So looking at my notebook, I just realized that I actually have nine things for the pros, but that's okay. We'll just finish up. Here's the last one, the ninth pro is let me look at my list because I don't remember oh sorry the ninth pro is that they don't need to eat very often you know the bigger the snake the bigger the meal they need therefore they need more time to digest that meal 
and so they really don't need to eat that often. Samoa was being fed every two weeks, but I just bumped up her meal and I think I'm gonna move her to every three weeks, which is what Kronk's at. She's about the size of Kronk now. She's catching up to him. She's gonna get the same meal size as him. So um, she's gonna get fed every three weeks. So very easy. That's one of the things I love about snakes is you don't have to feed them every single day. You just have to remember to once a week or once every two weeks, once every three weeks, whenever you feed your snakes, pull out a rodent, thaw it overnight, if that's how you do it, that's how I do it, and then feed them the next day. So I really enjoy snakes because they're, just, they're low maintenance. Here, that can be number 10. They're low maintenance. It goes along with the pretty easy care. They don't need to be fed very often, um, so therefore they don't poop very often, which is fantastic. And she makes my life easy. She actually poops in her water dish, so I don't have to clean her substrate out very often. Uh, I just pull out her water dish, sanitize it, refill it, and we're good to go. She's all clean. Okay, so now we're gonna get over to the cons. And con number one was one of the pros, and that's that they are very big. Um, so you know, six to 12 inch feet, like I said, you don't really know where your snake is gonna end up in that range. Um, so like we think that Samoa is gonna be very big because her last owner said that in the couple months she had her, she like tripled in size. I also think she was being fed a little more frequently than she probably should have. So she probably did have a huge growth spurt. Um, and I have since I think slowed down her growth um, and got back to like a uh, normal pace because I don't feed her all the time constantly. Um, but yeah, you don't really know how big they're gonna get and they're gonna get big. So if you don't want a big snake or you're intimidated by a big snake, a boa constrictor probably is not the snake for you. Number two, this one applies to Samoa. This is one I mentioned right at the beginning and that's that she's a little crazy. You guys saw she had a moment there at the beginning when we started talking about the pros where she kind of woke up and started going nuts. Um, that's normal for her. Once she's out for a while, she is like this. She's very calm, she's very good. But usually when I first take her out, it's usually a fight to get her out because she spazzes out in her enclosure and tries to like dive towards the back and wrap around things. Um, and then when I get her out, she's flailing around. So she is kind of a handful sometimes to handle at first, but once she calms down and she's all situated, she's very good. So that is just a Samoa con. Um, but for all, like, I don't know, some other boas could be like that. It probably is an individual thing, um, but that's how she is. The next con, going along with their big size, is that they do need a big enclosure. So this is going to cost you a little bit of money. You can't just stick them in a glass tank that you found off of Craigslist. You need to get a very big enclosure. A 4 by 2 is the minimum size. So if you had a boa on the much smaller size, that could possibly work. She has a 4x2 right now, and as soon as I have a house, her and Kronk are the first animals that are going to get new enclosures. I'm going to build them. I keep switching back and forth between the size I want, but at this moment, I think I'm planning on a 6x3x2. The problem I'm having is I don't know how big she's going to get. So I don't want to, I originally I was like, oh, five foot is good because it's good for Kronk, but she could still get very big. So, you know, she's got probably another year of growth before I even have to start thinking about houses and building enclosures. So it gives me some time to see kind of how big she might get. Um, I highly recommend if you guys haven't checked out my best friend in this reptile community, Medusa. Um, she has an absolute gorgeous boa constrictor. Her name is Brita, and she is ginormous. Like, I would kill for Samoa to get as big as Brita. I freaking love Brita. I can't wait for the day I get to meet Brita. So, if you haven't checked out Medusa, you don't know, follow her on Instagram or subscribe to her channel here on YouTube, you need to go do that so you can see Brita. So, cause she's a really good example of just how big boa constrictors can get. Um, so, highly recommend go check her out. She's just an awesome person in general, a ray of sunshine. But for the purpose of this video, you need to go check out Brita because Brita is just. But anyway, wrapping up that con, big enclosure also means big hides, big water dish. They need big everything, which can be a little costly. It's not the easiest thing to find. Um, so you need big everything for your big snake. 
The next con is that those big meals that they need every once in a while are gonna cost you more money than say what you would get for like a hog nose. The bigger the rodent, the more expensive it's gonna be. However, it does kind of even out because they don't need to be fed that often. So what you would pay, so like for example, what I would pay to feed like, let's let's use Tootsie Mice Kenyan Samboa as an example. What I pay to feed her every month is roughly what I paid to feed Samoa once a month. Tootsie eats every week, Samoa eats once a month. So when you add it up, even though Tootsie's mice individually are cheaper, much, much cheaper than Samoa's rats, when you add up how much she's getting each month, they almost even out really. Um, so as much as the individual rodent is more expensive, you're not feeding them as often, so it kind of evens out when you compare it to smaller snakes. But that individual rodent is gonna be much more expensive than say if you just had like a corn snake and you only had to buy like adult mice versus big rats. It's a little more costly to feed a big snake. Apparently she's comfortable. Okay, next con, big snake, big meals equal big poops. We were actually just talking about this last night. Um, me, Medusa, and Alyssa's lizards. We were talking about this last night, the size of Brita's poops. Um, may compare them to the size of a adult dude. Uh, so very big poops. That's one of the things I don't like about big snakes is the amount of um, feces they release. They're huge, it's a big amount. <laughs> so if you really don't wanna deal with big poops, a big snake might not be for you. Um, that's pretty much one reason, like I can't have a Burmese python or reticulated python in general because they're illegal to own in New York, but I wouldn't want one anyway because of the size of their poops and the amount of urates they put out. Um, that alone is enough for me. Like Kronk and Samoa, they do it for me, that's, that, that's big enough. <laughs> okay, con number six is that they can be aggressive. I know I said they're very docile, they're very, they're just good snakes, um, but to each their own. Animals have their own personalities. There are a couple bad seeds in a group, so there couldn't be a couple aggressive ones. But also, if they're not handled very frequently or they have poor care, that can also increase the likelihood of them becoming aggressive. So just make sure your care is good, make sure you give them regular attention, you're handling regularly, regularly, and uh, they should be just fine. But know that, you know, things can happen, they can be aggressive, and that can be scary because they're a big snake. Which leads me to con number seven, is again a very Samoa specific con, but it could apply to other boas, um, just depends on the boa. She is very, very, I don't want to say food motivated, um, strike happy, anything moves in front of her enclosure and she thinks she's getting fed. So at night, I have to be very careful walking by her enclosure because if I walk by, sometimes she'll strike at the glass thinking that something's moving, it's food, it's gotta be food, and I don't want her to hurt herself. So um, it's actually worked out really well, this new setup in my room because I moved the new enclosures in. My big snakes are actually behind my door now. So if I open my door to walk in, she can't see me. Um, she just sees the door. So I think it's definitely helped with the striking issues because before she was next to my bed, so I was always walking by there and she was constantly striking out every time something moved. If something fell off my bed, she would strike at the glass. Um, so I do be very careful. She's very good during the day. She doesn't do it during the day. Um, so when I go in to get her out, I still use a snake hook. I have her tap trained, um, but I can reach in and get her without worry that she's gonna try to bite me. At night though, I'm very careful. I don't usually take her out ever at night because she is very food motivated at nighttime. The next con was a pro and that's their lifespan. So not a lot of people want to commit to an animal for 20 to 30 years, which is one of the reasons you constantly see them being rehomed. People get sick of them and rehome them. They don't want to take care of them anymore. And 20 to 30 years is a very long time. So like I said, that's good for me. It works out for me because I get very attached to things and attached to animals. And so I love it. 
someone else though after like the first 10 years they might get sick of it and be like <clears throat> okay I need a change the snake needs to go um so yeah if you're not ready to commit for 20 to 30 years I suggest something that's not going to live quite as long con number nine is that they are nocturnal so you might see them out and about during the day occasionally but odds are they're gonna be sleeping all day and they're gonna come out at night when you're sleeping so they're not really an animal that you get to sit and watch be all active all the time and number 10 this one's kind of a stretch i just, i wanted 10 and 10 so i could leave it right now and have it nine to nine but we'll go ahead and make it 10. Um, they're humidity requirements they need a little more humidity than some of the other easier snakes like um, corn snakes milk snakes hog noses sand boas these guys are going to need about like 60 to 70 percent humidity and Although I don't find it hard, some people do have a hard time hitting that humidity, um, especially if they live somewhere dry like I do up here in New York. It is very, very dry. Um, so I don't want to say I don't have a hard time hitting humidity, but I know what I need to do to hit it. Um, but some people, it's just they can't hit the humidity and it's just very difficult to do that. Um, so. It can be a little challenging. So if you're in a very dry location, you kind of need to put in a little bit extra work to hit. I don't know why my camera just stopped recording. That was really weird. Is it focused? Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, hi, you're back. Um, but yeah. So like I was saying, it can be a little challenging for people to hit those higher humidity requirements that some reptiles need. And that wraps up all of our pros and cons of boa constrictors. I hope you guys enjoyed. Maybe this kind of helped you if you're trying to decide if you wanted a boa constrictor. I like to do these videos as kind of a segue into care guides. Um, I do not put out care guides lightly. I have to at least own an animal for one year before I even consider it. I have to be very confident in my care and I take a lot of time to kind of write it all out, plan it all out, make sure I've got all the information I want. Um, so it does take me a long time to put out care guides. I don't do it very often. Uh, so I like to do these videos. It's kind of a little segue into, um, care guides. So I've done quite a few of these videos. So if you found this helpful, um, I've done quite a few other ones. I've done bearded dragons, dual lacertas, um, iguanas, although that was a two video topic. Um, I don't think I've done other others. I maybe have, um, but I've got some more planned, so you will see more coming in the future. But yes, if you guys enjoyed this video, you guys like Samoa, you want to see more reptile content, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and as always, thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you for the next video. Bye!